I'm Steve Wiggins, and this is the Groundworks Ministries podcast. Today we're reading from the book of 2 Samuel, chapter 18. Let's focus on verses 31 through 33. Just then the Cushite came, and he said, May the Lord the King hear the good news. Today the Lord has delivered you from all those rising up against you. And the king asked the Cushite, Is the young man Absalom all right? And the Cushite replied, May what has become of the young man happen to the enemies of my lord the king and to all who rise up against you with evil intent. And the king was deeply moved, and he went up to the gate chamber, and he wept. And as he walked, he cried, My son, Absalom, my son, Absalom! If I had died instead of you, Absalom, my son, my son. As we read through these passages, notice how nobly many of the Gentiles act here in the Old Testament as opposed to the moral compromise that seems to rule the Israelite characters. It is very clear throughout the Old Testament that God is pleased to honor anyone of any ethnicity who wholeheartedly follows Him, regardless of where they came from. Notice how the Cushite gives honor to the Lord for David's deliverance. He has seen something in David's leadership, and he has learned something about David's God in the process of serving the king. I find it interesting how the Cushite tells the whole truth, whereas Ahimaaz simply wanted to be considered noble in David's eyes, and that's why he withheld some of the truth. In today's passage, we learn that major truths sometimes come by way of a secondary character. Finally, David learns the truth. Deliverance for David involved the demise of his son Absalom. And in this news, we get our most valuable lesson. If the kingdom of God, under God's chosen king, is to be saved, then the enemy who assaults the kingdom must be destroyed, regardless of our personal relationships. God can offer no security of salvation to His bride unless He brings decisive judgment upon her enemies. No sense in praying, deliver us from evil, unless we yearn for evil's destruction ourselves. Otherwise, we're like a patient ready to undergo cancer surgery who pleads with his doctor, deal gently with my cancer. Or who urges the surgeon, get most of it, but leave a little, because cancer and I have really developed a deep relationship. I can't even imagine myself without cancer. You see, that's foolishness. And David and Absalom are also metaphors for the warring relationship within us, between our new life as believers and our old carnal flesh. Oftentimes we become wickedly sentimental over our past sin. We want to take a day trip back to Egypt, as it were, just to say hi to the old folks in the neighborhood. We say to God, take all of me, but not that. Most of the tension within the church today seems to be over the spiritual conflict between those who are determined to be in the world and somewhat sentimentally of it, and then those who choose to be in the world and yet are actively driving worldliness out of their lives as they trust the Holy Spirit in God's Word. The visible evidence between the two, because they kind of look the same on, the, on a flyover, but the visible evidence is much like the difference between Ahimaaz and the Cushite. Ahimaaz only shares one half of the gospel, the love and the acceptance so as not to offend David. Meanwhile, the Cushite lays out the whole truth as it is. You know, there will always be those who cannot understand why there cannot be ecumenicity, <laughs> ecumenicity, ecumenicity, why we can't have an ecumenical relationship between believers and the world, literally between Christ and Antichrist. Why can't we all just get along? No, God's people know that David was wrong to pine after Absalom, and that the Cushite was right. Preserving God's kingdom involves the permanent removal of its enemies in our lives. Think about that. You know, a Christian is not sinless, but if we're growing in the Lord and we're driving out wickedness by the power of the Spirit according to the word of the Lord, 
Should we not be sinning less and less? I'm Steve Wiggins, and this is the Groundworks Ministries podcast. Groundworks Ministries operates entirely through financial donations from faithful people like you. And if you're being ministered to through the daily teaching of Groundworks Ministries and you would like to help us lead God's people back to the Bible, would you consider donating to Groundworks Ministries today? We need your support now more than ever. Donating is secure and it's easy at our website. So check us out at groundworksministries.com.